discuss a new feature called site templates in Prisma SD-WAN. This was released in January as part of the 632 controller update. Um, and even though site templates is a, a net new feature, um, the history and the genesis of, of automation and day one deployments is something that we've excelled at for uh, a long time since inception. So before we get into the demo and talk specifically about what's new, uh, I thought it'd be worthwhile sort of level settling and making sure folks understood some of the key differentiations in terms of how our templating solution works. So, you know, why Prisma SD-WAN? If you think of three big broad buckets, right, of why customers have been you know, really driving to Prisma SD-WAN and using it to excel within their business would be around application SLAs, automation operations, and cloud-delivered security. Uh, you know, today we're really going to focus on those automated operations and specifically uh, day two, so day one deployments. Uh, you know, we really look at templating from two aspects. One, you know, speed to deployment. You know, how can we help our customers take our solution, get it out to their offices, right? That's a huge time to value uh, you know, component for most deployments. But at the same time, what we'll talk about today is not um, a solution for all day two operations. We really like to separate the two. And I think that's one of the key differentiators hopefully you'll get throughout this session is understanding your day one and day two operations are different, right? But they're critical in terms of, you know, the operational costs that businesses face. And oftentimes it's an, it's an undervalued area that most customers don't look at when they look at deploying sites, right? Uh, most IT staff these days are lean, right? Zero touch provisioning is a critical component, not just to getting the box online, but getting to a fully operational branch, right? And so that's what we're gonna be looking at is these automated operations for day one deployments. And that's what Site Templates is here to solve. So even though Site Templates is a new feature, um, we've been doing automation for a long time, right? Prisma SD-WAN is a controller-driven architecture, right? A 100% REST API product, and we'll talk about why that makes a big difference. But you know, Tanishree and myself have had numerous customers, right, that we've helped be able to roll out sites at scale. And when we talk scale, you can see these numbers here from some of our customers, the number of sites that they're rolling out. In many cases, these are lean IT staff, right? You're talking, you know, one or two architects and then really relying on smart hands or, you know, folks at the store to plug these boxes in and then automatically have the site provision itself uh, provide consistency and repetition. So in some cases they're doing you know, 80 to 100 sites in a week, right? And the only way you can get to that level of scale is through repeatable automated processes. So software defined, right? That's what we're here to talk about. It's a software defined product as Prisma SD-WAN and some of the key components are here, right? The controller is critical to us, right? It stores all the configuration. It's how you interact with the product day in, day out in the UI, but be aware, Everything that you do in the UI is a REST API call. So what does that mean? From an automation capability, the sky's the limit. Nothing that you do in the UI cannot be an automated process. The IONS have built-in zero touch provisioning. You plug them in, they get to connect it to the controller and via the controller, they can learn all of their configurations. We have had always had RESTful API documentation, right? You can look that up as well as we have Python SDKs that have helped customers do automation. And then the last piece is this built-in abstraction. This is critical because what you'll see is that, you know, day two operations aren't just about modifications of templates, right? Customers who want to change path policies, QoS, different application settings from a security perspective, all of those can be separated out and abstracted from the device itself, right? So, you know, in the past, we use this concept of a config tool as part of Python SDKs, and we would take this and we would help customers in the likes of Chipotle, KVAT, and we'd automate that into their process. So with the lean IT system, they could be deploying, you know, hundreds of sites a week. But obviously site templates is going to enhance that for us. And really what we've seen is, you know, automation and the capabilities we have are extremely powerful, but sometimes a barrier to entry is just that most network administrators don't have a developer background, right? 
getting them up to speed with scripting, getting them up to speed with templating can take some time. And so what we've done is we've taken all our capabilities intelligence and really built it natively into the cloud controller as an easy to use solution for customers to go create these templates and deploy them without requiring any scripting knowledge whatsoever. So to what site templates is. Basically, site templates is within the UI ability for you to take a model site, right? You go out there and you configure a site just the way you like it in terms of all your configurations, and you can make a template of that. From that site, you can then dictate what is your unique configuration data. And then using that unique configuration data, you can go pre-populate that information uh, through your IPAM, through different systems, and you can determine, hey, I've got 100 sites, here's the addresses, here's the, you know, the site names, any unique data such as LAN IP addressing, and you can bring that to the UI and then deploy these sites at scale. And you can do this without hardware even being available. You can pre-provision hundreds of sites. So really all you're required to do is ship that device directly to the store, have that person plug it in, and then assign it to that device shell that gets created. And you'll see all of this in a demonstration. But site templates really takes all our history, all our intelligence with our config tool, how all our customers are deploying at scale, and really makes it an easy button for administrators to create templates and deploy at scale. Now, configuration abstraction is important because what you'll see in the demonstration is, yes, it's, it's creating a template file, but the T here is it's not a traditional approach in that it's a flat file. Right? It's not a router with every single configuration widget that you might think of, right? And it doesn't mean you have to change these template files anytime you want to make uh, configuration changes. So that's where our policy abstraction becomes critical. So if you've used Prism and you've seen it, right? We've got the concept of policy stacks. You know, very common day two changes are things like, I wanna change how I wanna forward my Microsoft traffic, or I wanna handle uh, you know, this application differently from a performance perspective or I need to change my QS policy, right? The controller abstracts that configuration, and that way it's not a template change. Those are day two operation troubleshooting, day two operation changes that you may need that have nothing to do with your template, right? The template is all about unique device configuration in terms of IP addressing, LANs, ports that you might need for that branch, and that's what is part of that configuration file. Now, another thing that's coming out this month is enhancing site templates even further, right? For those customers who want more flexibility in terms of how their templates are used, right? They have deviations from one site to the other, meaning, hey, in one location, it's a public IP that's static, and the other location, it's gonna be DHCP. Uh, we now support the ability to use conditional statements. And so really conditional statements is a function of Jinja, right? That's what the file format is. And from there, you can make these conditional statements to help provide flexibility in your template. So that way you can reuse, this, reuse the same template time and time again, maybe for different site types or just different uh, iterations of what you need at site. So as you start to deviate from you know, being consistent at every location, your know, conditional statements are very powerful to help you simplify that process. And the last thing, not least, right, uh, you'll see in the demonstration that Tanshree provide that all of this is natively now built into the UI. But case in point, being that we are a fully REST API product, every feature we create is also ability to be accessed via API. So even what you see in the site template, we also have customers taking this and extending this and building this into their tools. Uh, you know, a great example is if you wanted to have some sort of internal form, every time a new site needs to be spun up, you create a ServiceNow ticket, you provide the site name, the country, the software version, right, the required variables you need to deploy. And that kicks off an API call to our controller to go spin up that site, right? So you can integrate this with your automation tools, with your ticketing process to make this truly uh, a zero touch provisioning and never even having to interact with the UI and the controller. So that being said, I'm gonna pass this off to Tanshree and she's gonna walk you through a demonstration of the UI for site templates. Thanks, Graham. All right. So continuing on with the with the uh, with the demo today. So for the sake of the demo, what we're going to do is, as Graham said, 
uh, you know, to use this feature, what we typically do is we create a model site. So for our demo, our model site is going to be a uh, Santa Clara site. Um, I just want to make sure you guys can see my screen, uh, the slides, correct? Before I move on. Yep, you're good. Perfect. Okay. So to create a deployment template from my model site for Santa Clara, what I'm going to do is go to manage Prisma SD van, click on resources, and then site templates. Once you're at that menu, to create a new site template, click on add site templates. Uh, click on use an existing site as a template. What I'm going to do is name this site template West Coast Deployment and choose my branch to Santa Clara as I want those sites to mimic the Santa Clara branch topology and configuration. Let's click next to view the template. So the Prisma IC van controller automatically generates uh, a template with all the configuration that is pertinent to the Santa Clara site. We also generate a few variables automatically, such as the site name, address, serial number, software version, to aid uh, you in your journey of your template definition. So some of you may be familiar with what we see on the left-hand side. It's essentially the config tool that we've used. We've kind of embedded it within the, with, within the Prisma SD van controller uh, to generate that configuration template. If you see, that's uh, it's, it's a key value pair and everything that's pertinent to the site is available as part of this config definition. Now, uh, to create additional variables, uh, what you need to do is just highlight the value and click on the make variable button. Now, for instance, the IP subnet will vary across all of my locations. So what I'm doing is creating a variable called internet one underscore subnet. Um, so what you'll also note is the controller has the ability to identify occurrences of similar values across the entire configuration. And it provides the option to map all such instances to the same variable. So I don't have to go create multiple variables at the same time. Um, once we've re reviewed the template and created all the necessary variables, all you need to do is save the template. The West Coast deployment template at this point is ready for us to use. What are we going to do next is download the site variables that was created for this template. Now, we also have the option to download the template itself for offline modification if needed. Um, once the site variables are downloaded, it will be downloaded in a CSV format. Let's quickly review this file. If you notice, the site variable file contains all the variables that are defined in the template as a CSV header, along with the values that were used to create that variable. This file essentially can be used as a reference to you know, build that site data file that will be used for the template uh, when you do your you know, deployments at a later point in time. Now, using this site variables file, I've now created my site data file, right? That contains information about branch three to branch 11 that I intend to deploy. Um, I've included the site address, device name, circuits, uh, you know, specific to the regional provider, internet subnets. If you notice, um, the serial number column is empty. Uh, as Graham mentioned earlier, all of this can be done without you needing to actually have a device, right? So site templates offers the capability to pre-stage a site uh, and device configuration if the hardware is inaccessible or offline uh, or even you know, not shipped or allocated to the tenant during deployment. Now, if the serial number isn't provided, what the controller does is it will create a configuration container, what we call it as a device shell, that will hold all of the configuration until the device is actually bound to that shell. Now, to deploy, all we need to do is you know, select the template that we've uh, built and click on uh, deploy sites. Uh, we select the data that file that we just created, uh, which contains all the configuration file. Um, when we click on import, uh, you'll see all the data um, that was part of the site data file is now available on, on the UI. Uh, if there are any errors in the site data file during upload, uh, you know, for instance, maybe the mandatory parameters uh, are missing, uh, then the import action will be blocked. Now to initiate deployment, all you need to do is select the site you intend to deploy and click on deploy sites. Uh, what this will do is the controller will essentially initiate uh, jobs for each of the sites and we can click on the view job history uh, to track all the, the deployments that are going on. Uh, once the site is deployed, the deployment status is updated to success. If you see, it only took us a couple of minutes to deploy about 10 sites. Now, if you go to the branch sites page, 
uh, we'll see branch three to branch 11 are now configured. Uh, if you note, all of these sites are pre-provisioned without a physical device assigned to any of them, right? This essentially eliminates the need to have smart hands at each location. Now, once the device is online, it can be assigned to the site from the unclaimed state where it will inherit all the configurations that are part of the device shell. Um, if you look at branch 10, in addition to the site configuration, you'll notice there's a device shell, right? Um, the container essentially that holds all the, the device configuration. Now you can manage and configure this device container like you would any other device. You can see I have all the interface uh, menus, I have routing menus, SNMP, everything that's part of uh, a regular ION device is available uh, at the shell as well. Uh, like the West Coast deployment that, you know, mimic the Santa Clara branch, uh, you know, we can build templates for small, medium, or large branches based on the device model or topology. And to track deployed sites uh, using a specific template, all you need to do is click on the template name uh, to review the list of sites. That's all I had in terms of the demo. I'll open up for any of the questions uh, that we can take at this point of time.